everybody. We appreciate you joining us on your lunch hour to learn about what Arts Advocacy Day in Pennsylvania is. I am Maureen McGuigan, Deputy Director of Arts and Culture for Lackawanna County. Uh, so the Advocacy Day is usually held in the first week of May, uh, and it's sponsored by Citizens for the Arts in Pennsylvania, a state organization that works to ensure that arts and culture has a voice. Uh, it's a great day. Uh, artists, arts organizations, and individual supporters of the arts are invited to Harrisburg to take part in programming and also uh, visit in person with their legislators. Obviously, that has gotten changed because of the COVID-19 crisis, but Citizens for the Arts and PA has done a great job of moving everything online. They've actually been doing a month-long um, series of programming on advocacy. Uh, they have a lot of great tools on their website, which we encourage you to visit today. They ask if you have time today, if you can reach out to your legislators, and there's a lot of ways to do that. They have virtual postcards you can send them. You can post it on your social media sites. They have email templates, and they have other, they have lists of your representatives. So please, please do check out that website. Uh, we are lucky here in Lackawanna County. Uh, our commissioners, Jerry Notariani, Deborah Dominic Esquire, and Chris Shermack, uh, are very pro arts. They support a dedicated funding stream for the arts, which has allowed us to support artists, arts and culture organization, and sponsor a lot of free programming that uh, many of you uh, have probably attended. Uh, but we always have to work to ensure that arts and culture have a voice. And your legislators on the state, the local um, government leaders, and federal level want to hear from you. Uh, they work for you, so they want to know what issues are important to you. Advocacy simply means public support for a cause, and anybody can be an arts advocate. Uh, sometimes the word may sound intimidating, but it's really not. It's just you speaking up for what you believe in. So a couple thank yous before we head to our program. Uh, we have an arts advisory council, arts, culture, and education council that helps me with a lot of programs. So two members were especially helpful on this program. Melissa Carestia, who's a huge art advocate, she actually attended with myself and Connor O'Brien, another arts leader you may know um, from the Fringe Festival. We traveled to Harrisburg last year for Arts Advocacy Day. Uh, and then Jessica Mioni, who's also a leader in our community, heads up the TEDx Granton Project and among other programs, uh, worked on this. Um, they have helped design an advocacy tip sheet, which we will be sharing uh, soon with you with tips on how to be an advocate and they also helped me design this program and as always thank you to Electric City Television who especially since we've been online has been incredibly helpful uh, we really couldn't do this without them so our short program today is going to be an interview with Jenny Hershauer the managing director of citizens for the arts in PA I'm actually on the board of that organization it's such an honor to work with them um, and learn about advocacy and work with arts leaders from across the state she's going to tell us about what they do and again how you can be an advocate uh, then we're going to have a message from Mayor Paige Gebhard Cognetti uh, about the importance for the arts in Scranton, and then followed by a message by Representative Bridget Kozarowski of the 114th uh, District. Uh, she's going to share why she supports the arts. And then we're going to end the program with an interview with Lackawanna County Commissioner Chris Shermack and Tom Welby, who's wearing a couple of hats. He is representing uh, Marty Flynn of the 113th District Office. And uh, also First Friday, as you know, many of you may know, he works very hard to, to make sure that event happens every month, even online, but hopefully we'll be back um, uh, soon. So with that being said, thanks for joining us and let's start our chat with Jenny. <laughs> Well, welcome, Jenny. I'm so thrilled to have you on the, our show today because I know you have a very busy schedule and it's, it's been a crazy time for arts, culture, and the world. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, we're uh, lucky to be joined by Jenny Hershauer today, the Managing Director of Citizens for the Arts in Pennsylvania, a really important organization that advocates for the arts across the state and makes sure that we have support from the community and our representatives. So. Um, we thought we'd bring her on today since it's Arts Advocacy Day and she can tell us a little bit about the role of the Citizens for the Arts and the importance of advocacy. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. Uh, tell us about Citizens for the Arts and PA. Thanks for having me, Maureen. Um, Citizens for the Arts has been in existence since 1979. 
Um, the organization was created by um, a group of um, bipartisan individuals who thought that um, there needed to be support for funding for the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. Since then, we've expanded our scope to include all arts and culture things um, that, that go on in Pennsylvania. And we um, do advocacy both on the state and the federal level. Um, it includes advocacy for funding, advocacy for public policies that would affect arts and culture. Um, we've also expanded um, some of our uh, interests into tourism and things of that nature, economic development, um, reviving downtowns. Um, so that's, that's basically what Citizens for the Arts is about. Um, we're a membership organization, so if anybody's interested, they can join Citizens for the Arts um, on our website. I have a very simple sign-up page. Um, also, we also have there, you could sign up for our newsletter, um, and you don't have to be a member to get our newsletter. So that gives you, you know, send out information about what's going on that might affect arts and culture um, throughout Pennsylvania. Um, one of the big things that we did in, in 2012 is we established the Legislative Arts and Culture Caucus, which is a bicameral, bipartisan caucus in the General Assembly. It is the largest special interest caucus, um, mm -hmm. and we boast over 90 members. Um, and we have four um, co-chairs, Representative Lee James from Venango County, Representative Tim Briggs from Montgomery County, Senator Jay Costa from Allegheny County, and Senator Pat Brown from um, Lehigh County. And um, in the past, we had a we had Representative Stan Saylor um, as one of the original fa founding chairs. Um, so we had representatives from both the yeah. appropriations committees on the House and in the Senate, and we're still we still keep in close contact with Representative Saylor, although he's not in a leadership position in the caucus anymore. Well, that's so great to hear. I love that it's bipartisan because the arts are important on every side of politics. Uh, and I know it might seem obvious, but I think it, it's always good to hear this message about why are the arts important uh, to communities and especially here in, in Pennsylvania. Well, I think, um, you know, the arts, the arts are, are more than just um, a thing that makes our lives better. I mean, you know, all of us are influenced by the arts on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, you walk into your, you know, your living room and some architect has designed something, some painter has painted a painting that you have on the wall. So we're always influenced by the arts. Um, but the arts in Pennsylvania is also an economic driver. And that's one of the messages that we try to get across to the members of the General Assembly that um, it's more than just fluff. You know, this this is an industry that creates jobs, pays taxes, and um, brings in tourists from out, from outside the state to generate more income um, and revenue within the state. Yeah, that's a good message because you're right. Everybody participates if you're sitting home during COVID watching streaming shows or want all the great programs on the internet you are participating and like I love that analogy of going into a building art really is everywhere um I know so many people and groups are suffering during COVID-19 but I think that arts and culture has um especially some significant um challenges can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing well um, what one of the challenges that um arts and culture have, and I'm gonna use like performing arts organizations in particular. Um, and that doesn't mean that visual arts groups aren't experiencing similar things, but performing arts groups um, generally have, you know, performers that they have to pay. So those people are out of work right now because there, there are no performances going on. Um, they usually um, maintain rent on large, facilities, you know, and they have to keep the upkeep for that. So they've got that kind of thing going on. Um, smaller arts organizations, you know, such as Citizens for the Arts, we're a one person operation. Um, you know, we have to uh, cut corners and make sure that, um, you know, our, we're a membership organization. So, you know, we've seen a reduction in membership as a result of it because people can't afford to pay their memberships if they can't afford to pay the rent. Um, and um, it is important to us um, at Citizens that um, people still stay members of Citizens, regardless of whether they have the ability to, to 
mm -hmm. um, renew their dues because um, it's important that we have a voice um, and we're able to give that, share that voice with the thousands of people out in Pennsylvania that are supportive of arts and culture. Well, that's a good lead into this question then, um, having a voice, the importance of that, and then people can be empowered. Uh, sometimes I think people hear the word advocacy and it sounds like a big scary word, but but what is advocacy and how can people get involved? Um, there's many different ways to be involved in, in advocacy. Right, um, you know, Citizens for the Arts does advocacy, I, I say with a small a, rather than a large A. Um, we organize grassroots support for arts and culture. So, you know, we reach out to individuals across the state um, and, and ask them to do various things like write a letter to their legislators in support of funding. Um, advocacy is really important. Um, there have been many things during my tenure um, as managing director of Citizens for Arts that I've seen firsthand where advocacy has made a difference. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I have uh, talked to legislators. They tell me that if they receive 10 calls or emails on a particular issue, then they pay attention to that issue because of 10 people, which I mean, that's nothing, right? I mean, you know, in a state of 12 million people, 10 people is nothing. But um, they say if they get that kind of contact from 10 people, then then it makes them take notice to a particular issue. Um, I think because of our legislative caucus, we've had um, support when other um, special interests have seen reductions in state support. Mm -hmm. um, and that the caucus came about because individuals wanted their caucus, I mean, their legislators to join the caucus. So um, that's important. Um, with this past budget, I mean, our whole budget thing for FY 2020 and 21 is a bifurcated budget. Um, the General Assembly in the end of May um, passed a budget that is only for five months worth of funding. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we, we, you know, it, we, what we received was level funding for the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts for that five months. Um, we're hoping that we'll get another additional seven months of level funding, that there won't be any reductions. But um, through our contacts with um, Representative Saylor, I sent him a simple email. He's not my representative, but I sent him an email and I thanked him for making sure that that level funding was in the budget. Well, you know, I expected him to say, well, thank you, Jenny, for supporting blah, blah, blah. But instead he picked up the phone and called me and he, he told me thank you that this, you know, he's going to make sure that that funding level funding is put in the next seven months budget. He oh. couldn't guarantee it because they don't have the revenues yet until until July 15th. Um, so they won't know what they're dealing with as far as that is concerned. And then he told me about some other funding that was in the budget um, that could affect arts and culture, could be supportive of arts and culture. It was in the COVID supplemental budget and it included $20 million for arts and culture. Now the funding goes through DCED, the Department of Community Economic Development and the Pennsylvania Historic Museums um, Commission. But um, that funding could be applicable to arts and cultural organizations that have received funding from those two entities. There's also a block grant that's going to counties that um, arts organizations could have access to. And so we're encouraging people to reach out to the counties, um, like Lackawanna County, and um, talk to them about how they plan on using that block grant funding and how the arts could be um, included in some of that funding. So those are the those are the kinds of things that happen when um, you do advocacy. And you know, advocacy is all about developing relationships. Um, and one of the things that I always tell people when I talk to them in, in any sort of advocacy product, um, presentation is that legislators and congressmen work for us. They, we don't work for them. So they're very interested in hearing what their constituents have to say. They're always running for re-election. So if there, an issue comes up that a lot of people are not happy with them about, they stand the chance of losing um, their election. And they don't want to do that. So they're willing to listen to you. Um, and a lot of times, you know, I've, I've, you know, dealt with legislators who I wouldn't think would have been supportive at all, mm -hmm. but they end up being supportive because their constituents are behind this particular issue. So well, um, advocacy is very important. 
That was a great, um, very eloquent way of kind of outlining everything that's going on now and what people can do. Um, you know, I think sometimes people, not that they forget that they have a voice, but just those simple things that you mentioned, writing a letter, an email, you know, sharing a personal story um, can really make a difference. So I guess that leads us into the final question of today. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, normally um, Arts Advocacy Day is a takes place in the physical space. It's really wonderful in Harrisburg. It's so moving. Unfortunately, we can't do that. But Citizens for the Arts has been really great in pivoting it to an, to an online. It's been going on for a month, but June 10th is the official day. So can you tell us what people can do today to, to practice advocacy and get involved? Sure. Um, what we're asking people to do right now is to contact their legislators through email. We have um, a template set up on our website on our um, you just click the take action button um, and it'll take you to the template. Um, you enter your address information and the template automatically generates um, contact information for your, your particular legislators. And you can either use the email that we have set up um, or you can create one of your own. Um, we suggest that maybe you use port parts of what we've set up and add a personal story. Um, and you click submit and it goes directly to your legislators. So uh, it should take you no longer than five minutes to do that. <laughs> so to great. And I know that takes a lot of work. Um, we really appreciate you. All you do, you make it look easy and you make it easy for people who are busy but still want to be involved. So we're encouraging all of our residents here in Lackawanna County to get involved um, and keep the dialogue up even after Arts Advocacy Day. Um, and. You know, I think the arts will be a big part of rebuilding communities too with uh, with everything that's happening and bringing people together. So I think it's even more important to advocate for the arts. Um, well, thank I you. I think that, oh, no, go sorry, ahead. I was going to say, um, I, think you, I think that um, the arts have helped right now in this whole crisis yeah. um, because arts organizations have gone to online and present or presenting all sorts of things artists are presenting individual class um, yeah skill classes um symphonies are putting their their musicians together in ways that you know just are beyond my <laughs> what i can fathom right. um you know so there are things going on and the arts are trying to keep everybody's spirits up and i think that's what um is important right. Um, yeah, right for us. well said. And but, I, I just want to make... Need, we will need financial help. Yeah, I mean, that's the reality. But it's been great to see people, because I know people, there's a, a lot of suffering right now, but people have been very generous, I think, seeing some of the fundraisers online. So I do want to make a plug. I think the, the membership levels are very reasonable for Citizens for the Arts. For an individual, is it $25, I think? For no, it's, it's $50 for individuals, $35 oh, for students or seniors. Students, sorry, my bad. But still, I mean, that's for a year and all of the work and getting involved and the information and the events. Hopefully we'll be able to go back to that. I know you had a great state arts convening last year that was just awesome where people could learn and network. Um, so we encourage people to do that or at least sign up for the membership letter if, if you know, that's a good start. Um, and all the organization fees are based on uh, size. So I think that's really thoughtful. Blackwater County is a member, I'm happy to say. Um, and I have the pleasure of serving on the board of Citizens for the Arts. And I've learned so much about advocacy and, you know, trying to bring that back to our community here. So thank you, Jenny, for all of your work. And again, for taking time out to speak to us today on advocacy. And we know we're going to have a great uh, advocacy day here and hopefully continue that dialogue and that important work. Thanks so much, Maureen. All right. Stay we safe appreciate the work Lackawanna County is, oh, is doing as well. Means a lot. Thanks. Stay safe and healthy. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we just heard from Jenny Hershauer of Citizens for the Arts in Pennsylvania, who gave us a great interview about Arts Advocacy Day and also the work of Citizens for the Arts in PA for advocacy. Um, we're actually really lucky here in this corner of Pennsylvania. We have a lot of support from our legislators and government leaders. In fact, um, Lackawanna County is the only state in PA to have a uh, sorry, only county in PA to have a dedicated funding stream for the arts, which has really made our community um, very vibrant um, and wonderful place to live. So I'm so happy that we have Commissioner Chris Shermack here today and also Tom Welby from Marty, uh, Representative Marty Flynn's office, who's also a great arts leader himself and has been involved with many organizations. So he'll also talk about that. 
Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn to uh, Commissioner Shermack first, who has a really nice statement to read about the importance of arts, culture, and heritage in our region. And then we're just going to have a little bit of chat about the importance of um, support from our uh, government leaders. So welcome. Thank you, Maureen. Happy to be here. You know, our region here in the Northeast uh, played a major role in the, in the history of our country. You know, we're the largest manufacturer or producer of anthracite coal, which helped us lead the way. Um, Scranton was nicknamed the Electric City back in 1880 when we introduced uh, electric lighting and then we were the first to have electric only um, streetcars. So that was early on and it, it made a big impact in, in the country. So I, I urge you to come and visit Lackawanna County and our, our local parks here and other things to come and see. We have where we are today, the Electric City Trolley Museum, the Anthracite Heritage Museum, the Everhart Museum, the Scranton Iron Furnaces, Steamtown National Historic Site next door with all the trains, and then don't forget to take a trip 300 feet below ground in the Lackawanna County Coal Mine Tour. So we hope to see you out and about enjoying our beautiful county here in Lackawanna County. Thank you. So, uh, you know, one of the things we've seen with the power of the arts is economic development and, and tourism and how it can really revive a region. Now, of course, we're here in the pandemic and isolation, but things are starting to um, open back up, which is great. And we are making plans to try to bring people back to some of those locations uh, and enjoy Lackawanna County. Do you have any thoughts on the um, economic developments of, la of the arts, culture, and tourism? Well, the, the arts have been big for economic development. So with First Fridays and just all the different things that you put on during the year, um, which unfortunately some of them we're going to miss this year, which is tragic, but we're getting through it. But it's been, it, it, it's a huge impact, all the restaurants, hotels, um, everything throughout the county. I think that's a good segue into our uh, other guest here, Tom Welby, who is an intricate part of First Friday and has adapted. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about that and, and maybe just some general thoughts on the great arts and culture scene in Lackawanna County. Welcome. Thank you, Maureen. And, and uh, as, as far as First Friday goes, uh, we're, we're so grateful that we have the support of all of the businesses in the area. We have all the nonprofits that support us, the public and the artists, particularly uh, the commissioners. Uh, Lackawanna County is just incredible in their support of the arts and how that trickles down to the businesses and the individuals for individual development, student development, uh, artist development. Uh, we're, we're really lucky uh, in, in this area. With, in particular with First Friday, we'll, we'll get anywhere from when, when we're up and running and, and we hope to be for July, July 3rd. It should be a fabulous First Friday downtown. Uh, but, but with that, uh, we'll have as many as 40 businesses that will open up, some of them galleries, most of them small shops and, and restaurants and bars and, and uh, unique boutiques. It's, it's, it's a, a terrific night. We walk around, we enjoy it. And, and, and me, personally, I got involved about a dozen years ago and I came down to first Friday while it was just starting, literally just starting. I said, I don't want to go down, that's just not for me. And uh, it turned out uh, I am just a lover of First Friday. You get to see and meet so many people and be exposed to so many different kinds of art that, that are, are, are terrific. Everything from performance art through, through static art. And it's, it's great. We have a lot of bands and, and musicians and artists that are walking around uh, uh, doing, doing different um, live art. Uh, and, and, and that's a lot of fun, but it's great to see and it's terrific for the businesses. The businesses get, for some of them, their busiest night of, of the month. And, and for others, it brings in new people who are just walking by that business. They say, oh, let's see what's going on in here. And they're introduced to brand new clients, brand new customers that become lifelong customers as a result of the exposure that they get uh, uh, at First Friday. And, and, and uh, we're really excited to have the support of our artists, of our, uh, our, our art community, of all the businesses, the nonprofits that support us, the corporations that support us, but with, with, with all due respect to everybody else, uh, the, the county, we're really grateful uh, to all the support that we get from Lackawanna County for First Friday. 
And now I'm going to ask you to put on your uh, other hat. Uh, the word advocacy can maybe be intimidating to people, or they want to they want to get out there and give support to the arts. But um, can you talk to us a little bit about how people can get involved and how they can have a voice and what steps they can take uh, to work with their legislators and other government leaders? Uh, absolutely, and and actually you remind me of something else in in getting involved. Uh, for, we have a lot of bands that walk around. We'll have uh, uh, Jim Cullen and Jack Bordo, Indigo Moon Brass Band, and Mariachi Band, and, and others that will walk around and play. Uh, we're also open to having any, any musicians, any artists that want to walk around on their own, please do. We have choral groups from Marywood University that walk around. Uh, just get your gang together and, and, and come down and walk around, have fun, and entertain. Another way to get involved is, is through your community. We're always looking for volunteers and also the, the businesses themselves, reach out to them and, and ask how you can help. Or reach out to the county or the city and, and see about doing something on the square or, or they'll be closing off more streets downtown, whether it be in front of the government building, the former Globe store, uh, or other areas. They're, they're open to uh, uh, things that you might have at the back of your mind. You say, hey, maybe we could try this. Please do get involved and, and, and ask from a government level it's really important to let your legislators know from local level uh, up through federal, and, and I represent the state, but it's really important to let them know that, that you support the arts and how important the arts are to the, the, the vitality of a community uh, as well as the businesses, and, and it, it's really important. We need that to bring new people into the area and to keep people in our area. If we don't have the arts and, 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 and the different attractions that help to keep people here, uh, people will come in, they'll, they'll stay for six months, and they'll say to their spouse or significant other, hey, I've had it. We need the arts, we need the support of the arts, and we need for you to be involved. Call your legislators, your, your local officials, and remind them that the arts are important to you and they're important to our community. And Commissioner, would you agree with that? that? I know you are very active in learning and you like to hear from your constituents as well about what matters to them. I do, I agree 100%. And, um, you know, we, we need some good things right now. And the arts entertainment part, you know, I, as far as I'm concerned, you can't have enough of that. So I, I agree totally. That was a great uh, sentence to end on. So again, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Shermack and, and Tom Welby for taking time out of their busy schedules to come and share their knowledge and thoughts about arts and culture in Lackawanna County. And, and remind you that, that you have a voice in the community and you can always reach out to them and express how the arts has uh, touched your own life. Uh, thank you to Electric City Television for helping us out today. Um, and yeah, let's get out there and, and do some advocacy. Uh, Citizens for the Arts, again, has some great tools on their website uh, where you can use those templates to send to your legislators. Uh, thanks for joining us. Hi, I'm Scranton Mayor Paige Pagnetti. I think the COVID-19 crisis has really put in perspective what it means to live in a world without enough art. We have art, thank goodness, and there's been ways during this crisis that we've been able to experience art virtually, and lots of families have been able to do arts and crafts and things at home, which is wonderful. But there's a lot of things that we've been missing. We've been missing theater. We've been missing uh, arts uh, you know, out in the community. We've been missing art galleries. We've been missing First Friday. We've been missing music. I was supposed to do a concert on May 1st. I was so excited about it and we couldn't go. So we are living right now a little bit of what it would be like without art in our society. And it's terrible. So I can't advocate enough for the need for art in our city, in our area, just in general, uh, in our schools. We have a long way to go in Scranton to help make sure that we've got venues for art. We have wonderful things going on already. We have beautiful murals throughout the city. We have the Everhart Museum, which does a tremendous job. The Scranton Cultural Center, which does a great job. Lackawanna County, of course, Marine, you do a tremendous job in making sure that we're keeping the arts at the forefront here. We need to support the arts. We have to do it. We are. We have to take the feeling of loss that we've had during COVID-19 and those experiences that we're craving, those the, the film that we're craving, the theater that we're craving, the, the art galleries and the social aspect of art that we're craving. We have to take that and we have to understand and let us let us not forget what it's been like in these months and make sure that we're continuing to support arts in the future. Hi everyone, it's Representative Bridget Kozarowski and I wanted to say that art is our universal language and we must do everything we can to protect its survival. The arts allow us to explore ideas, express emotions, and better appreciate cultures from around the world. The arts are not the only way for our residents to express themselves or channel their energy, but it's also a great source of revenue for our county and beyond. 
I encourage everyone to reach out to their legislators and ask that they too protect arts and culture. Thank you very much and everybody stay safe. Well, thanks for spending your lunch hour with us today. We heard from some really great community and state leaders, so I hope you are inspired. There is still time to go on the Citizens for the Arts and PA website and look at some of those tools and make some phone calls and, and send some emails to your representatives and, and local leaders if you would like. Uh, but advocacy is every day, um, and hopefully in the uh, near future, the Arts and Culture Department will be also sharing some resources. And uh, in the meantime, please stay safe, healthy, and involved.